هارد مانیترینگ آن دی پارتوگراف which means that the membrane is intact if the membrane is ruptured we use this term ICMAB V C it means that the liquor is clear M it means that the liquor is meconium state meconium stained A is it means that the liquor is absent there is no liquor when we do an artificial rupture of membrane there is no liquor absent liquor and the B it means that it is a bloody stained liquor We come to the third uh, point, which is the fetal heart rate monitoring by using a cardiotocography or what we call CTG. Cardiotocography is a technical means of recording the fetal heart and the uterine contractions. Graphy, both the fetal heart beat cardio as well as the contractions of the uterus, the toco. It is typically used in the third trimester. Usually, CTG used in the third trimester. Why? Because in the first and second trimester, usually the uh, central nervous system of the fetus is not completed yet. So the uh, autonomic, uh, autonomic nervous system also is not uh, completed in a uh, well so the uh, significance of the cardiotocography is lost fetal heart rate uterine contractions this is the machine and this is the paper and this is the record of the fetal heart and the uterine contraction external fetal monitoring a belt on the abdomen and it is connected to the record what we called an external fetal monitoring there is a transducer for sensing the uterine contractions we put it on the abdomen this is the transducer and it's another transducer for the sense sensing of the fetal heart rate contractions and the fetal heart are assessed and translated to the a paper to a paper in this way in a graphic way this is the fetal heart rate and this is the uterine contractions fetal heart rate 60 80 120 140 150 the baseline this is the baseline and average fetal heart rate for one minute and for 10 minutes also and this is the uterine contractions the intensity of the uterine contractions by Montevideo units assessed by Montevideo 40, 50, 60 millimeter mercury. The indications of fetal heart monitoring in cases of oligohydramnias, gestational diabetes and hypertension, abnormal fetal heart detected, malpresentation during labor, during multiple gestation, post-date pregnancy, previous cesarean section, prolonged rupture of membrane, abdominal trauma, and meconium stained liquor. In all these conditions, we need to, uh, we need a fetal, intrapartum fetal heart monitoring. Types of monitoring, we have continuous CTG for a high-risk patient record, and we have intermittent auscultation by sonic aid for a low-risk patient without a record. 
in intermittent auscultation, we hear fetal heart for one minute after uterine contractions. We listen to the fetal heart for one minute after the end of the uterine contractions in order to know if there is any deceleration. We hear fetal heart rate every 30 minutes in first stage and we hear the fetal heart every 5 to 15 minutes in second stage. Indication for continuous fetal heart rate monitoring, we have, as we said, we have continuous for during the whole of labor and intermittent, which is every 30 minutes in the first stage, every 5 to 15 minutes in second stage. Indication for continuous fetal heart monitoring in high-risk pregnancies, when there is an induction and augmentation of labor, when there is a reduced fetal movement, fourth one in premature labor and threatened the premature labor, and the fifth one in the antepartum hemorrhage and intrapartum hemorrhage. The CTG tracing requires both qualitative and quantitative description. We describe uterine activity, the contractions, and we describe the, uh, the CTG will describe baseline fetal heart rate, the baseline fetal heart variability, presence of accelerations, periodic or episodes deceleration, episodic decelerations, changes or trends of fetal heart rate patterns over a time. The most popular structure can be remembered using the acronym DRC Bravado. It is the summarization, the DR of define risk, C is the contractions, BRA, it means the baseline rate, V, variability, A, acceleration, D, deceleration, O, overall impression. So you can remember the, the what we, we need to assess in the fetal heart rate by uh, this acronym, the uh, DRC Bravado. How to read CTG? First, we have to make sure that you, we can read the name of the patient, the date, time, gestational age, and calibration. We have to calibrate the machine. Second one is defining the risk. If, the, if this pregnancy is high risk pregnancy or low risk pregnancy, because interpretation of CTG reading, it is affected by the presence of high risk or low risk pregnancy. If the pregnancy is high risk, our threshold for intervention may be lowered. It means that when we see any abnormality in the fetal heart, we need to intervene, inter, we, uh, inter, uh, we need to do intervention uh, immediately with a, threshold, with a low threshold for intervention. Contractions. This is the graph of uterine contractions how the duration of the contractions, if it is lasted more than 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and the intensity of the contractions above the 50 Monty millimeter mercury. Duration, how long do the contractions last? We have to assess the duration of contraction and intensity, as we said, of the contractions. This is an intense uterine contractions reaching the 50 millimeter mercury, 
and it is a frequent more than it is about five contractions per 10 minutes and the duration is more than 30 seconds frequency frequency of the contractions as we said we need at least five uh, three to five contractions per 10 minutes in order to say that it is a good and efficient uterine contractions normal contractions less than or equal to five contractions in 10 minutes the average over at 30 minutes window less than five contractions per 10 minutes tachycystole more than five contractions in 10 minutes the average over a 30 minutes window if the contractions is more than five contractions per, per 10 minutes it is called a tachycystole it means very frequent okay for an average of 10 minutes how to differentiate between true and false labor we can differentiate the, by recording the intrauterine pressure and false labor is not more than 25 millimeter mercury as in this graph this is 25 if it is less than 25 it means there is a false it is a false labor not a true labor okay this a graph is for fetal heart rate what is the baseline of this fetal heart rate the baseline this is the baseline it is above 160 so it means it is a tachycardia without uterine contractions so this is a significant baseline rate of fetal heart a normal full-term fetal heart rate is between 110 and 250 beats per minute and the premature in preterm or premature fetus it is between 120 to 160 beats per minute the baseline rate is the average heart rate of the fetus within a 10 minutes window look at the ctg and assess what is the average heart rate has been over the last 10 minutes and we have to ignore any acceleration or deceleration when we want to assess only the baseline we have to ignore any acceleration or deceleration we need to assess only the baseline for a window of 10 minutes bradycardia if the fetal heart rate baseline fetal heart rate is less than 110 and tachycardia if the basal fetal heart rate is more than 160 beats per minute what are the causes of bradycardia either hypoxia of the fetus or congenital heart block post-date pregnancies prolonged record compression pro, sorry prolonged cord, cord compression or cord prolapse epidural and spinal anesthesia epidural and spinal anesthesia sometimes can cause fetal heart bradycardia what are the causes of tachycardia if the fetal heart rate is above 160 the causes are maternal tachycardia maternal fever infection cardiomyonitis hyperthyroidism fetal or maternal anemia fetal cardiac arrhythmias as an svt let us see what we do we mean by variability this is the variability this is the variability from beat to beat متكون كلها على نفس الوتيره تكون تسعه تنزل مثل الزقزاق بالضبط هذا it means that the baby is the fetus is healthy this is a healthy sign 
the baseline variability between B to B. It means that the variability is present and adequate. Variability can be either absent, undetected zero. It means that there is a hypoxia. Minimal, it can be minimal between one to five beats per minute and premature occurs in prematurity in case of hypoxia or when we using a drugs as a narcotics or during the sleeping phase of the fetus, which is usually less than 40 minutes. So if the uh, variability is between one to five minutes and we suspect that this is a sleeping phase, after 40 minutes, it should be changed and increase in the variability. We try to awake the baby by palpating or moving the abdomen of the mother so the baby can be awaked and we can assess the variability. Moderate variability between 6 to 25 beats per minute, which is normal, and marked or severe variability Saltatory pattern greater than 25 beats per minute suggests acute hypoxia or mechanical compression of the umbilical cord. يعني مو بس ال 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 decrease بالvariability reduce ال increase in the variability more than 25 beats per minute which means it suggests the presence of acute hypoxia while the loss of the variability it means the presence of chronic hypoxia. This is an absent variability. Show for the trace shown. The chart is not adil. We have no peaks and troughs. And this is the minimal peaks and troughs. Peaks and troughs less than five beats. And this is marked variability about thirty beats per minute in each line. هذا الفاريبل تنحسب بهالطريقة. It is more than 25 beats per minute variation. Reduced variability can be caused by fetal sleeping, as we said. This should, should last no longer than 40 minutes, most common cause. The most common cause is sleeping. The other causes are fetal acidosis due to hypoxia, more likely if late deceleration are, are also present. يعني بمعنى أنه we don't, we don't depend on the presence of only one feature, just only reduced variability. We need to, or we have, uh, if we have another abnormality, we can depend on uh, interpretation of the fetal heart monitoring, if especially if loss of variability is associated with the presence of late deceleration, this is an a significant uh, finding and we need to intervent. Fetal tachycardia, drugs, can cause fetal tachycardia, opiate, benzodiazepines, methyl dopa, magnesium sulfate, which cause CNS depression. Prematurity variability is reduced at earlier gestation, less than 28 weeks of gestation. And in case of congenital uh, heart abnormalities, when there's a congenital heart abnormalities, we have reduced variability. In a prematurity, especially less than 28 weeks of gestation, we have loss of variability. Sometimes during, due to drugs, opiate, benzodiazepines, methyl dopa, magnesium sulfate, also there is a reduced variability. And sometimes we have a fetal tachycardia which lead to decreased in variability get my fetal tachycardia and variability will be lost okay acceleration the accelerations are an abrupt increase in the baseline 
heart rate of more than 15 beats per minute for 15 seconds. Antenatally, there should be at least two accelerations every 15 minutes in healthy baby. The presence of acceleration is reassuring acceleration occurring alongside uterine contractions is sign of a healthy fetus. However, the absence of acceleration with an otherwise normal CTG of uncertain significance. Yani if we have only absence of acceleration and the other CTG findings are normal, so it is of no significance, acceleration, okay? If acceleration lasts more than 10 minutes, more than two acceleration, more than two minutes toilet, يعني أكثر من 15 seconds, it means a prolonged acceleration. This is a fetal heart acceleration. Acceleration from the, this is the baseline and this is an acceleration of the fetal heart rate, okay? Deceleration is an abrupt decrease in the baseline heart rate of more than 15 beats per minute for more or equal to 15 seconds. Normally, they are not present. In normal uh, CTG, uh, deceleration should be absent. When it is present, it means there is uh, something wrong within the fetus. This is the baseline and this is the deceleration in the fetal heart. Deceleration, another deceleration, another deceleration. And this is the peak of uterine contraction and we have to see if the, the relation of deceleration to the uterine contractions, okay? Types of deceleration, early deceleration, Eerie mirror image with uterine contraction due to head compression. An early deceleration occur with the beginning of uterine contractions, reaching the peak with the peak of uterine contractions, and it will return to normal with the uh, disappearance of uterine contractions. Usually, it occurs when with head compression in the second stage of labor, and it has no significance if other features of the CTG are normal. But when it is present with another abnormal feature of the CTG, so in this condition, it is a significant, okay? This is the fetal heart, and this is the uterine contractions, okay? The peak uterine contraction, starting with the with with the starting of contractions, the deceleration will start, and it's the peak of deceleration with the peak of uterine contractions, and it will return to normal with the disappearance of uterine contractions. So this is an early deceleration which is considered normal, especially in the second stage of labor due to head compression and the presence of other normal CTG findings. This is the early deceleration with contraction. It is a mirror of contractions, mirror of contractions with the peak. Peak to peak, okay? This is the early deceleration. Sorry. This is a late deceleration. The uterine contractions begins, still no deceleration. When the uterine contractions reaching its peak, now the fetal heart will start to be decelerate when the contractions is starting to, to disappear and it is disappear completely the fetal heart rate deceleration reaches its nadir at 
this at the point when the, the contractions is disappeared so this is called a late deceleration and, and if there is a repetitive late deceleration it means that there is placental insufficiency and umbilical artery acidosis and this will lead to respiratory and metabolic acidosis because of severe hypoxia and may lead to cerebral palsy this is a late deceleration as we said it will start after the disappearance of contractions this is the peak of the contractions now the contraction will start to disappear but the deceleration now started to be more and more okay variable deceleration it means that a variable intermittent periodic slowing of the fetal heart rate with rapid onset recovery and isolation not related to uterine contractions it means that the deceleration occur unrelated to the contractions it comes some some times with contractions with with starting of the contractions and other uh, time it will comes uh, with the uh, disappearance of the contractions it is called a variable deceleration and this is a, a, an ominous sign of fetal distress caused by compression of the umbilical cord it means that there is a compression of the umbilical cord okay so acidosis may occur if prolonged and recurrent so we have to uh, intervene in this condition this is a variable deceleration 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 not related to contractions هنا انا ماكو contraction اكو deceleration هنا ماكو contractions اكو deceleration هنا انا اكو peak contraction اكو peak deceleration unrelated to contractions this is an ominous signs يعني sign خطير لازم ننتبه له especially if there is an another feature abnormality fetal heart overall impression once you have assessed all aspects of the CTG you need to give your overall impression هسا احنا نجي نسوي overall impression شفنا ال CTG قرينا presence of acceleration presence of deceleration baseline fetal heart rate baseline fetal heart variability now we assess the overall impression can be described either as reassuring CTG or suspicious CTG or pathological CTG. Reassuring the overall impression is determined by how many of the CTG features were either reassuring, non-reassuring or abnormal. The NICE guideline below demonstrates how to decide which category a CTG falls into to 90 minutes deceleration typical variable deceleration with over 50% of contractions for over 90 minutes single prolonged deceleration for up to 5 minutes the absence of acceleration with otherwise normal trace of uncertain significance and the abnormal is presence of these findings classification of ctg into four classes reactive ctg all parameters are normal present acceleration absent deceleration reassuring no acceleration but still normal in reassuring ctg we do uh, ph test and normally it is more than 7.25 we obtain the sample by fetal scalp blood sampling. Suspicious, there is one abnormal parameter, either abnormal baseline, abnormal variability, or presence of deceleration, pathological CTG, abnormal parameters, two abnormal parameters, we should interfere. What do we mean by we should interfere? In the first stage, it's only by cesarean section, and in the second stage either by cesarean section if the head is uh, not engaged 
uh, and is still high or instrumental delivery if the fetal head is low. Thank you.